Hey, good morning. Yes, it is. It's Wednesday, November 8th. I still got that in my throat. So today's not going to be a long video. Just going to be something kind of ponder about, I guess. And I have other things going on that I could tell you about here in just a minute. So stay tuned. Alright, so what are we going to talk about today? We're going to talk about a few things, but the main thing is what skill set do you think you need that will help you succeed, you know, like from most important to least important? And it's, it's like when you approach anything. I think if you're going for a job, most employers are not looking to see if you're really qualified, okay? And a lot of times, qualified has a tendency of a turn off to a ex certain extent, extent. Because like when I went to work for the mines, I had no clue how to be a miner. Other than when I was a kid, you know, being a hard rock miner underground, I had no experience. But what they saw in me was the ability, the aptitude, and the willingness to learn. Those three things got me hired for that company. And I excelled because the way they set up their business underground was you had levels you had like utility two utility one and then you had uh there was two other ones in there before you even got to what they call minor and each one got a certain bonus you know the utilities didn't get any bonus you had to learn and once you achieved and learned something you go to the next step and the next step. And some for some people, they never got out of the utility stage because that's where they were happy. But they weren't getting a bonus, you know, from the overproduction of the mine, of the zinc that we were trying to get out. So what I did there was they had the willingness to teach me if I had the willingness to learn. And I think that's probably the most important mindset you should have and, and traits that you should have when you're out there. If you're looking for a job from an employer, a bigger employer, but even starting out doing small energy repair, you have to have the aptitude, the willingness to learn, In order to get started doing it. A lot of people start off with doing this as a hobby. Or, you know, growing up fixing up their own crap. And turning it into a profession. You know, the shops are a kind of a thing in the past. As I hate to say it, but... Uh, if you looked around towns years and years ago, we'll go back to Barney Fife and Andy Griffin, if you know what I'm talking about. But they had markets. They had the little market, grocery store market in town, clothing store. They had the bar, they had the garage, you know, and it was a simple life. But everybody played a part and it worked. You know, some were farmers that swap their stuff for groceries or clothing, what have you. It was a very functional society, basically. And if you bring it forward into the, the 60s and 70s, you had a lot of small garages all over the place in towns and cities that, you know, worked on cars. And you could tell the mechanic because they had grease all the way up their arms and... 
And a lot of times those guys did the, the small engine repair on the side. And gradually because you had dealers that started selling the stuff to people and they started doing the repairs too as well at their shop. So you saw that grow. And then when the big box stores came in, they lost a lot of their sales to the big box. See, if you want to succeed in small engine repair or in business, you have to have the a, a, a ability and willingness to learn and change and change course. Okay, so those shops could no longer sell the low-end models that Walmart and Home Depot and all them guys were selling because you can't compete. So how can you compete? Well, you show the, the customer a better built, heavier duty model that costs more and they trust you, they will buy your machine. In this day and age, <laughs> I hate to say it, this day and age, most people go in and look at something, whether it be a car, uh, a lawnmower, what have you, and they never think about how much it actually is going to cost them in the end. They're just like, if you can get me, you know, the loan, get me accepted, I'll take it. No questions asked. And that's how it got a lot of young people in trouble financially. They were buying things that were outside of their budget, per se, that they really shouldn't have had, that were toys that they didn't need but they wanted. So now we've come back because they were making money, the, the dealers then were making money, good money on parts. So they lost some of their sales, but they had the parts department and the repair shop, and they made up for it. And that was either raising their labor rates, raising their their markup on their parts, what have you. You know, that's how they survived. And then you come to the next stage, and the next stage is now you don't have the big market of the low-end lawnmowers. You don't have the market for the parts. And people are starting to question how much it's going to cost to get it fixed versus just going and buying a brand new one. And that's why I say today is somewhat of a throwaway society. And that is people, they don't keep their lawnmower 10, 12, 14, 20 years if you keep it in good shape. They don't. They just look at it as a means to an end and whatever. So the aptitude and the willingness to learn is what's going to save you when it comes to business. And that is being able to change and, and do things differently than what was done before or are you doing something that you had never done before but you have the willingness to learn and the ability to learn you know that's the big thing is ability and then willingness some people it's hard to learn new things that's okay we're not all built the same whereas others are and then there's some in between we're all different, we're all unique, and you can't take 10 of us, put us in a corner and generalize about the 10 of us because we're so unique, each one of us has something different to offer in our own way. And that's okay. I, I tried telling you, you have to be yourself. Who else would you be? I mean, People will gravitate towards you if, if you feel good about yourself. You feel good about where you're at. And 
That is the second thing that I would say is important in business, and that is having the ability to offer good customer service. You know, this business isn't about, you know, here's your bill, pay the bill, next customer, here's the bill, pay the bill. It's not going to last if you do it that way because you're just looking at that point for one-offs as far as I'm concerned. But, you know, you don't want to be overbearing if you have sales and... There's certain, I mean, you can talk, like I said in previous videos, you talk to your customers like you would your friends. That's the easiest way I could tell you. I mean, I mean, if you talk to your friends that every other word is a swear word, take that back. Don't talk to your customers like you do your friends. You know, be reasonable, come on. You know, each customer is different. And if you find somebody older and you're using a lot of swear words, or even somebody younger that, you know, my grandfather always said, you know, that instead of letting people think you're stupid, by opening up your mouth, now they know you're stupid. Because you can't, if you're using these derogatory terms, that means you're uneducated, that you can't find the right words to go for it. And, you know, I try to refrain from hardly ever swearing, I'll be honest with you. The, I just, there are times when I get upset or angry or something like that with myself, that I might, you know, say a few words, but I just feel that it's better to use the right words instead of derogatory or swear words, you know, with your friends and your family and your customers so you have to have a good customer service and that means interacting with the customer you know you have to gain the customers trust and you have to be honest with the customer and want that customer to come back when they ever need you and if you leave a good impression on them when they're leaving they will come back to you and they will tell everybody about you, how you treated them that well. So now we got to have the ability and willingness to learn and then know how to deal with customers the correct way. Like we talked about in other videos, you know, the 80-20 rule. 20% of your customers are going to provide 80% of your revenues and not one of them are going to question your bill. We've talked about this. You're, the third thing you're going to need to be is a problem solver. Here's my problem. You provide a solution. I pay you. We're all happy. So the third thing is a problem solver. You have to be able to figure out what's wrong with their unit. You know, why is it not doing what it's supposed to be doing? So now you become a pro problem solver, but you still need the one of the willingness to learn and the ability to learn to help you with your problem solving because it may be something you've never seen before. Now, some of you will run to YouTube and watch a YouTube video. That's fine too. Whereas others will just simply start tearing it apart to see how it works. And for that, that works for some people. It works great. And then for the others in between, they're going to find a manual or a book or something that is on that unit and troubleshoot it and find out what's going on with it. So those are the three biggies. You know, the willingness and the ability to learn providing good customer service, and then be a good problem solver. If you can tackle those three aptitudes and be willing to embrace those three, you're going to do fine. 
because the rest is just collecting the money and paying the bills, which would be your fourth one, somebody that knows how to financially manage money. You can't have $20 going out a month if you only have $10 coming in, unless you're the U.S. government. All of our checkbooks, we can't do that. So we have to watch the numbers. And we like to give our customers breaks when we can. But we're also there to make a living. And we're doing it by working out other people's stuff. And we've talked about this before as well. That you cannot, I don't believe that it's fair to learn on the backs of your customers. I don't know if you understand how I'm saying that. And when I say that, I'm saying that if you're just starting out and you know just enough to get yourself into trouble, but you have the willingness to learn and the ability to learn and you're a problem solver, then during those periods of learning something new that your customers should not be paying you while you're learning. If you're just getting started in the business, I would not be charging 120 bucks an hour. Sorry. To me, you're not worth it. And I think if you thought about it, you'd know you're not worth it. While you're in the learning phase and building your business up to where it's going to be a full-time shop, you need to, to charge based on your experience. And that may be 20 bucks an hour, 15 bucks an hour to, to start and then work your way up. And then when you get your own shop and you you got more overhead, then you can raise that amount up but by then hopefully you have the experience from learning the trade on different stuff so that when you get to that shop phase you're getting stuff in and out quick because you've seen this before it's called learning you just put it away until another machine comes in with the same issue voila you know so As you're progressing in business, you start out weekends, nights and weekends or whatever have you, uh, you may be doing it for $15 an hour and that's a few extra bucks in your pocket. And if you're a youngster, you're probably doing it for 10. All right, so a lot of the shops don't care for people that are doing that, starting up doing it on the side. But as I've told you before, I, I tend to team up with those guys and even the big guys and partner with them. If you need anything, give me a shout. If you run into something that you're not sure of, you know, give me a shout and we'll figure it out. So what I'm saying is an example of learning on the back of your customer. Now, you may be approaching something because it's new to you and it may take you four hours whereas an experienced mechanic can take a look at it and have it done in 15 minutes now it's not fair to your customers to bill them four hours for something that an experienced mechanic could knock out in 15 minutes right so while you're in the learning phase you want to keep your rates down and as you become more experienced, you're worth more. You're getting stuff done quicker. And the more you do it, the better you get at it, hopefully. So that's what I'm getting at as far as not learning on the customer's back or charging them this crazy number per hour when an experienced guy could catch it in 15 minutes. I hope that makes sense. All right, so I'm going to start rounding this out. I told you it's going to be fairly short this morning. We found out, that I found out this morning that my son and his fiance and the kids there, they lost their house to a fire last night. And I haven't touched base with him yet. Um, we got things I got to get away this morning and then 
call and I'll take a ride out to see if he's around and what they're going to do and so forth. Family is family. you got to take care of family. And that's what I'm going to do today, figure out what's going on and see if I can help. So on that note, we'll catch you tomorrow morning. Thanks so much for watching.